and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we will be speaking about a very interesting topic, and that is the otitis media infection, which is also commonly known as the middle ear infection. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of the otitis media infection itself, let's take a closer look at the middle ear anatomy. So the middle ear includes three small bones, which is the hammer, which is also known as the malus, the anvil, which is also commonly known as the incus, and the stirrup, which is also commonly known as the stapius. So if we take a closer look at this image down at the bottom of my screen, we see what these three little bones look like. So here we have the malleus, then we have the incus, and finally we have the stapius, which is more towards the inner ear. So the middle ear is actually separated from the external ear by the eardrum and is connected to the back of the nose and throat by a narrow passageway, which is called the eustachian tube. So this is actually the eardrum here, and this is part of the external ear. And then we have the internal ear, which begins here, and this is that eustachian tube that connects to the back of the nose and throat that we're speaking about. And then it says the cochlea, which is a snail-shaped structure, is part of the inner ear. And this is actually what the cochlea looks like. So this is that snail-shaped structure. So this is actually an image of the left ear anatomy. So if we take a closer look at the right ear anatomy, it's very similar because it's symmetrical. But here we have the external ear, then we have the middle ear, which includes the malus, the incus, and the stapius. And then we have that cochlea, which is part of the inner ear, and here we have the eustachian tube, which goes down to connect to the back of the throat and nose. So when we talk about the middle ear, we're just talking about this airfold cavity in which these three bones are found. So now that we know what the basics of the middle ear anatomy is all about, let's take a closer look at what is anatitis media infection. So anatitis media infection is a painful type of ear infection which occurs when the area behind the eardrum, called the middle ear, becomes inflamed and infected. Although acute otitis media can occur at any age, it is most common between the ages of 3 months and 3 years. Acute otitis media often occurs during this age range because structures in the middle ear, such as the eustachian tube, are immature and are not functioning properly. So from this definition of otitis media, we get that it's actually the inflammation and infection of this middle ear cavity. So we're going to have some fluid buildup, we're going to have inflammation, we might have some pus and redness and irritation, and it's actually quite painful for these patients as well. And as the definition suggests, the, the otitis media infection can occur at any age, but is most common between the ages of three months and three years. And this is because of something called this eustachian tube, which doesn't actually function properly between these ages. So the eustachian tube is the communication channel from the back of the nasopharynx, so the nose and throat, to the inner part of the ear. So when this cavity becomes blocked or we have an inflammation or it doesn't work properly, or it's much shorter as it is in infants compared to in adults, this causes the infection of the middle ear. So anything that prevents the fluid from the middle ear from draining properly into the back of the nasopharynx is going to cause the fluid buildup there and then the infection. So infection means the growth of specific bacteria or viruses within this cavity. So as we mentioned in the slide before, the middle ear is that airfall space behind the eardrum that contains the tiny vibrating bones of the ear. So this region right here. And this is actually the specific region that now becomes surrounded by this infected fluid full of bacteria or viruses in anatitis media infection. And this actually occurs due to improper drainage via the eustachian tube or from bacteria or viruses traveling up from that nasopharynx into the middle ear and completely colonizing this cavity. 
So I want to explore this topic a little further by going on to the causes of the otitis media infection. So the eustachian tube is a tube that runs from the middle ear to the back of the throat. And an otitis media infection occurs when the child's eustachian tube becomes swollen or blocked and traps the fluid within the middle ear. So the trapped fluid can then become infected by bacteria or virus overgrowth and in young children, the eustachian tube is shorter and more horizontal than it is in older children. So therefore, the infants tend to be more likely to develop such an infection. So the eustachian tube can actually become swollen or blocked for several other reasons, including allergies, a cold, the flu, a sinus infection, infected or enlarged adenoids, cigarette smoke, or drinking while laying down, such as in infants or breastfeeding in infants. So anything that can cause irritation to this eustachian tube or a blockage in the flow of fluid from the middle ear into the eustachian tube and into the back of the throat actually will cause anatitis media infection. So several things can actually cause a blockage in this fluid within the eustachian tube such as allergies, a cold, flu, a sinus infection, infected or enlarged adenoids, cigarette smoke, or drinking while laying down. And these are the various ways in which the eustachian tube is actually provoked and in which this otitis media infection can set in quite easily. So moving on, let's explore the signs and symptoms in this disease. So the first thing the patients will complain about is ear pain. And this symptom is obvious in older children and adults. In infants too young to speak, we can look for signs of pain like rubbing or tugging at the ears, crying more than usual, a trouble sleeping, or acting fussy or irritable. These patients will also have a loss of appetite, and this may be the most noticeable in young children, especially during bottle feedings. So pressure within the middle ear changes as the child swallows, causing more pain and less desire to eat. Irritability, so any kind of continuing pain will cause irritability in these children. Poor sleep, so the pain may be worse when the child is laying down because the pressure in the ear may worsen and this will lead to a difficulty in sleeping. Fever, so ear infections can cause temperatures from 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 38 degrees Celsius, up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So some 50% of children will have a fever with their ear infection. Drainage from the ear. So sometimes a yellow, brown or white fluid that is not earwax may seep from the ear. And this may mean that the eardrum has ruptured, which means has broken. A trouble hearing. So bones of the middle ear connect to the nerves that send electrical signals as sound to the brain. So fluid behind the eardrum slows down the movement of these electrical signals through the inner ear bones. So these patients may also suffer a difficulty in hearing. So these are the various signs and symptoms that can affect one with an otitis media infection. The diagnosis of otitis media so the doctor can usually diagnose an otitis media infection based on the symptoms described together with the otoscope exam. So during the otoscope exam, the doctor uses a lighted instrument called an otoscope to look into the child's ear. A healthy eardrum will be pinkish gray in color and translucent, which means clear, as we can see in this picture here. And if an infection is present, the eardrum may be severely inflamed, swollen, and red, as we can see here. So based on the signs and symptoms that the patient presents with, together with that otoscope exam, we will be able to put the diagnosis of an otitis media infection. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of otitis media. So most otitis media infections will go away on their own, but antibiotics such as amoxicillin are recommended for children under the age of 6 months and for children at high risk for complications. The children are usually treated at home with over-the-counter pain relievers like acetaminophen or ibuprofen, a warm washcloth on the ear and rest.
The doctor may also prescribe some ear drops that can help with the child's pain. And that brings us to the end of this video on Atitis Media. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notification so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.